Right folks, so I'm just about to start installing the cylinders with my decompression plate uh, or spacer plate if you will. Um, here I've got my spare piston with some rings on it and I uh, just wanted to uh, show you how service manual instructs to install the rings. Those rings are moving on those pistons and uh, therefore uh, once the cylinders are out it's a good idea to maybe readjust those rings to the settings that service manual recommends. So this arrow here indicates the exhaust. So imagine this is towards the exhaust side. So they want you to put the top ring, which is that one here, with the gap right opposite that, that uh, arrow. So the gap would be just here. Now the second ring, the mid ring, they want you to put the gap left. So there we go, here's the gap, you can see it. Well, hopefully you can. Okay, then you've got those uh, the, the, the bottom ring, which actually consists of three rings. So there's a top ring, which they call top rail, then the bottom ring, which is the bottom rail, and this uh, funny shaped spacer. So the way they want you to do it is they want you to have this spacer uh, set with the gap literally opposite that exhaust arrow, which would be here. So if you closer look you might actually be able to see this this is the gap you see how I'm opening that gap so this is right opposite that arrow and then the top side rail they want you to put the gap uh, right here on the right hand side here like that from the exhaust so here we have it and uh, the bottom the bottom side rail the gap is here so they want you to put it like that so basically bottom rail like this top rail like this um, the spacer like this uh, same as the top ring like this and the second ring like this so fitting this uh, decompression plate uh, made of aluminum, this is exactly 2 millimeters uh, thickness so that's going to raise the cylinders and head by about 2 uh, millimeters. So it's going to go like that and as you can see I've got my um, sealant here applied. This is uh, Hylomar Blue. It says non-setting, it's been 4-5 or five minutes and I can already tell it's starting to set so I don't know what's that, that all about. But uh, anyway, it is what it is. Good. Okay. Alright folks, I've got all, all four cylinders engaged with those pistons. So now I'm going to be tapping them in, tapping them in place. Okay, that was a bit of a job, but yeah, so we've got decompression plate uh, or raising plate, whatever you want to call it, installed, and we've got uh, the cylinders installed. 
Okay friends, so let's have a look at this. So we've got the, um, the compression plate fitted. As you can see, that lovely alloy plate here. And uh, have a look at this piston, which is now at top dead center. And previously, that piston was actually sticking out above the surface of the cylinder. It's a bit, not a lot, but a tiny little bit. And now you can clearly tell it's actually below it. And uh, I did my research and a lot of people told me if I just go ahead with bolting the RF cylinder head on this GSXR 1100 motor, the piston to valve clearance will not be sufficient and the valve will meet the piston, destroying the engine. So first test of my valve wrapping. I've got some coolant in those uh, combustion chambers poured in and now I'm going to be blowing compressed air into both the intake and exhaust ports to see if I have some bubbles coming out. So let's see. The intake side seems to be holding really nicely. Let's check the exhaust. No air bubbles whatsoever, so I guess this combustion chamber is sitting nicely. Let's check the other one. Zero bubbles from that side. And zero bubbles from that side either. All right, let's check that one. Intake's holding nicely. Zero, zero air bubbles, fantastic. All right, so as you can see, I've once again overspilt that coolant, um, but the point is, all the valves and their surroundings are covered so I can do the test. So once again, intake. Zero bubbles and let's check the exhaust. And there's absolutely zero air bubbles. So what I'm going to do now folks, I'm going to be checking the piston to valve clearance um, and I'm going to go with just one cylinder because essentially they're all the same. So this is the cylinder I'm going to be checking and I'm going to use the clay method. So this is just a standard Play-Doh thing for children and I'm going to use a piece of that and place it here in those valve reliefs. That was a close call. I'm going to place it here in those valve reliefs. There we go, that's the first one. If there's any excess uh, going here on the middle of this piston, which is flat, I'm just going to remove it with the razor blades, and that's, that's not a big deal. Okay. And then we've got here. One thing I forgot to say, uh, obviously the surface of that piston has to be nicely cleaned and dry so the clay sticks into it because what you don't want to happen is to, you know, close this engine up with the cylinder head, moving it and then, you know, the valve takes away the clay uh, from the piston. So let me just put the last bit on and I'll show you a little close-up of what I've done. So have a look at this. So all four valve reliefs have been covered with clay. And one thing I need to uh, tell you about, you see those gaps here between the cylinder wall 
and the piston. So in all four corners, I've got those gaps. I've got those gaps exposed, and this is because I wouldn't want this clay to get in between the piston and the cylinder wall during the test, because certainly that wouldn't be very good for this engine. So there's a significant gap there. And what I'm going to do also is I'm going to put a tiny amount of oil here on top of those clay molds because I wouldn't want that clay to lift with the valves when they touch together. So that way I've got a very clean and dry piston holding the mold from the bottom and then top of the molds are uh, oiled up so when they touch with the valve they're not going to be lifted and now I'm ready for the assembly. Okay so let's place the gasket on. All right. So the head nicely sits in. Now let's lift the cam chain. All right. So now for those four valves, I'm going to have to install uh, the bucket tuppets. And obviously before the buckets go in, the actual shims will need to go in. So first, just a tad of oil in there. Okay, and now the shims. And then a bit of oil on top of that. And the bucket goes on top of that. Okay, so now I'm going to install the cylinder head bolts. But have a look at this. They originally had those washers here, and because we've lifted the whole setup up by about two millimeters, those those washers are now too thick. So I'm going to replace them with thinner washers. So first bolt. Of course, the threads must be absolutely clean for that. And the next, and by the way, all those threads on those cylinder head bolts have to be slightly coated with oil. Here goes the next one with another thinner washer. Okay, and the next one with a thinner washer, and the next one. Okay, so I'm just about to install the camshafts, but before I do that, I want to show you something. So I've got three sets of cams here. This is for the RF900, this is for the GSXR750W, and those are for the GSXR1100W. I've measured the, the length of the lobes on those cams, and very interestingly, they're very similar cams, and they will all work on that motor with slight modifications of the GSXR cams because both 750 cams and 1100 have those protrusions here. You see that? That is sticking out by about six millimeters, half a centimeter. Whereas RF900, they have a very little lip sticking out here. So compare this, you see? So if you wanted to install the 1100 or the 750 in the cylinder head from the 900, you would have to shave that, which I've done in my other RF900 engine. So that will definitely work. But another difference which I've noticed is that those lobes are somewhat of a different length on 
the exhaust cam. So let me just show you what I mean. So this is the GSXR 1100 exhaust camshaft, and I'm going to measure the length of the lobe. Okay, so here we've got 36 point, sorry, 36 point 14 millimeter. All right. Now I'm going to do the same for the 750. And here we've got 36.14, so it's exactly the same. But have a look what's up on this RF900 cam. 35, 32. 35, 40 actually. So that is a lot, a lot shorter. So when they say milder cams, what they mean by that is that the valve lift on that cam wouldn't be wouldn't be as large. It wouldn't be lifting as much as on the other cams. So I think for the sake of safety of this build, I'm going to go at least for that stage with RF900 camshafts, just because they're smaller valve lift, and also that could help me with providing a bit more torque low down. That's what normally happens with milder cams. So let's install the camshafts. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to smear certain areas here in this engine with oil. There we go. This is where the camshafts will go on. I'm only going to turn it once, maybe twice. So probably nothing would happen anyway, but just in case, I want to have some delicate lubrication here. And those tappets here. Alright, okay. Alright, so let's install the camshafts. So, first I'm going to go with the um, intake cam. Okay, so the intake goes in here. Engaging with the sprocket. Okay, and I think I still need to move it a bit. Yeah, that would be about correct. Now, the exhaust. Okay. Just need to move it a bit because it's not exactly correctly set up. And a bit more. Right, so now I'm installing the cam holders. They just need to be uh, fully compressed and snug. That's all that has to be done to them. And I'm gonna do it very sort of step by step. All right, so the cam holders are now nice and snug. All right, so proper installation of cam chain tensioner, which is removing the spring from inside and uh, that bolt. Then compressing the plunger. Plunger goes in. All right, so tensioner installed. I've got proper tension here now. And let's hope I'll be able to spin this engine. And let's see what's going to happen with our clay on the valves. Okay, so I'm turning the engine. Okay, so it seems like it spins okay. One more full turn. Okay, this is where the valves are touching the clay, I believe. All right, and let's see how we've done. All 
Alright, so let's disassemble it. Cam holders off, cam chain tensioner is off as well. I'm not going to care about the order now because they haven't been torqued up properly, they're just snug. Okay, so I've removed all the head bolts. Uh, of course, they went in the same spot. So uh, we're sure there's going to be no cock up during the final assembly. So let's level it, wiggle it up. So now it's cut and I'm going to remove half of it. It will be somewhat difficult to remove it because of uh, those pistons being very dry. So give me a second, I'll remove it and I'll get back to you. Alright, there we go. So let's just remove half of the clay from each of the valve reliefs. Okay then, so as you can see, on the exhaust side here, there's plenty of radial clearance. So when you look at the valve, we're going to be checking two clearances. Vertical clearance, which is, call it up and down. So how far is this valve from the piston? That's the vertical clearance. And we're also going to check a radial clearance, which is at the edge of the valve face. So we're going to be looking how far is that edge of the valve from that edge of the valve relief. And as you can see on that imprint, it's really very far because that's how it sits. So the gap between this and this is what we are interested in. So we can see in both situations that this distance is significant, both here and here. So radial clearance on both exhaust valves is really, really good. You can maybe see that here I've got a gentle mark, like a little touch, and second one here. Let me just measure it. So here the difference would be about three millimeters and here it would be about also three millimeters. The gap here would be in fact about three and a half millimeters and on the other side Three point six millimeters. So when it comes to radial clearance, we're fine with both valves, intake and exhaust. So the safety recommendation for those clearances would be at least one point three millimeter for the radial clearance, and then uh, for the vertical clearance, so which is which would be the thickness of this clay here. The recommendation for uh, the intake side is about one point three millimeters at least, and then on the exhaust, the recommendation is two millimeters. And now, let's check the vertical clearance. Fuck. Welcome again, peeps. So, I've just measured my piston to valve clearance. I've got a lot of radial clearance on all valves. I've got good clearance on the intake, intake valves. But unfortunately I've only got about 1.7 millimeter clearance on the exhaust valves. So unfortunately I'm going to have to take the cylinders off again. And then I'm going to have to fit another base gasket. Just a factory Suzuki base gasket on top of my 2 millimeter spacer. So that will raise the cylinders by another quarter of a mil. Uh, actually, maybe even 0.3 of a mil, which will put me in a safe range. So again, more work, more expenses, more hassle. So see you soon.